So what do you perceive as the observing consciousness? I really don't know. That is the best answer you can give. It's impossible to find any entity there. This is confusing in the beginning because we are only used to deal with things. Also a thought or a sensation is a thing. Even if you feel your body, it's a subtle sensation in your heart, for instance, but that is still concrete. Now it gets subtler. So this answer is perfect, even though it's strange in the beginning. Accept this fact that you cannot find a self. If you could, you were mortal. Because everything that is coming into existence has its time, it will disappear. We have not found what is immortal yet, but at least the fact that you cannot pinpoint anything, that you cannot name anything, is a good hint in this direction, that you are formless. Just accept this fact, although it's difficult to accept. We don't like that really. We like to have something concrete. But accept the fact that all you can observe will be an object. The subject can never be observed. I'm not talking about the personal subjective elements like I have this trait, I have this mood, I have this memory, I have this story, I have this plan. These are also thoughts. But when we get very precise and I said repeatedly, the whole self-inquiry is a matter of precision. When we get very precise, we will never find an I. So, for the moment, accept this fact that you can not be pinpointed. And from here on, accept that everything you perceive even your most beloved self-image is just a thought or a thought pattern. You can see it when it rises, you can perceive it when it's there, and you may perceive it's going away. That is why in Vipassana people learn to observe without interfering. Let's use an example. You're sitting at a beautiful lake or a river and you see something is floating, it comes into the field of your vision, it's there and it's gone. And then the next thing comes. Similarly, just be open for your mind. Also your mind, which every person in the world would say, this is me, this is what I want, this is what I know, this is what I can. If we look precisely, this mind is nothing but a mental event in your present experience. There is nothing like the mind. The mind is just a happening right now. Whatever you feel, whatever you can perceive, this is happening. And let it just happen, nothing else. And there may be reactions especially when it's emotional, what, what comes up, you may react. 
And also this, you can perceive and let go as something objective. Ramana Maharshi, when describing self-inquiry, would tell a beautiful story. When Sita was to choose her husband, there were several princes. Amongst them were Rama. And when she was asked, would you like this prince, or is this the right one, or is it that, she would say, no, no, no. As soon as Rama was the one who was pointed out, she bent her head, like a beautiful virgin would do. And this is a wonderful analogy for self-inquiry. The self cannot be approached directly. Because if we would find anything, it's just an object. You are already there. I could not talk you into not being here. It's impossible because you are here, but you cannot be objectified. So all you can do is to sift out all objects, whatever objects turn up, even your most favorite ones. If you look precisely, you will see this is a thought. This is not me. I am aware of this thought. And again and again, also, Turn the light towards yourself and be interested, what is it that is watching right now? And you may find some mental event, you may find some sensation, you may find this and that, but all you describe is not another object. In the Christian tradition, this is called via negativa. That means in the Vedic parlance, neti neti. You give away, you give away, you give away, you give away. And in this process, what you are becomes clearer. So, please tell me your experience. I'm observing myself feeling very peaceful, very relaxed, open-hearted, feeling very loving. Beautiful. Just relax into this. Being, knowing. God is called Satchitananda here. And this presence, this knowing presence, is what you are. The refinement must happen again and again, because we are so used, the mind is so used to think. But that doesn't matter. You can use each thought as if you look into a mirror. In the text of Who Am I? that was written by Bhagwan in the Guhai Namashivaya cave. He said, as soon as any thought comes, turn back to yourself by inquiring what and who is perceiving this thought. So this is what we have done. And now we want to bring this state of clarity and awareness into the outer perception. If you would restrict it to a meditation, it would be restricted. And that's a misunderstanding. So please come back to feel your whole body as a unit, 
as one homogeneous entity. And then be aware, still with closed eyes, that there is space around you. We are sitting here in front of Arunachala with all those sounds of a beautiful Indian evening. Just realize there is space around you. And then slowly, like a newborn child, slowly open your eyes, but stay in this perception of space. Rather than looking at something, remain in this spacious sense. And just remain in this inner restful alertness. It's nothing contrived. It is always yourself. It has always been yourself. It is like a screen of a computer. You can, a film can pass over it and many things, but the screen doesn't change. So you have always been yourself. The only thing is that we usually get fooled by our mind, by thoughts, by emotions. So even now you can remember that you are formless. You could not find an entity called Henry inside. No I. Our whole life we have been conditioned and trained to be someone. And that has its place, of course. But when we want to find our eternal nature, which is always present, we have to be more precise. So, the daily practice is a remembrance a remembrance coming back to this stillness, this realization that you are formless. For me, meditation is like a microscope. And I can observe very precisely. And also in Ramana's days, there was the habit, they were sitting for hours every day in the hall and would practice inside. But of course, what you find with a microscope, it should be useful for your daily life. So, come back to this stillness in the midst of activity. Just remember, I am observing something. I can breathe out and feel my feet on the floor. And then more and more you will realize that you are what you seek. It's a science that is very, very simple and yet it's very, very profound. We can use our whole life and in fact that would be the best to use each and every little moment to inquire into that which is always there. The silent presence of God. For this Arunachala stands, for this Ramana Maharshi stands and all those numerous saints that were here and even those seekers that come here today they yearn for this peace of presence.